Now, joining me on Pet Corner this morning is Heather Summers, founder of the Dog Able Charity. Welcome, Heather. Thank you. Thank you for having us. And who have you brought in with you today? This is Django. And Django is uh, one of your Labrador. helpers? Yes, he's one of our helpers. He works in schools and, and represents us and a bit of, bit of a face of Dog Abled. He's gorgeous. And um, tell me a bit more about Dog Abled. What do you actually do in the community? Sure, absolutely. So we go into um, to schools and we work one on one with children with various needs. Um, any learning difficulties or challenges. Uh, we also work out in the community in residential homes or secured facilities and we do some public events through libraries and other community um, venues as well. Do you love your job? Love my job. Yeah. <laughs> what sort of difference does it make to the kids? Huge. Uh, a quick example: we helped one child that um, was selective with selective mutism, um, and through using the dog as a pathway, we were able to get her to talk um, oh, by wow. giving the dog commands. Oh, that's incredible! Yeah. Wow. Sort of feels like you're really giving back, hey? At that Absolutely. point. Absolutely. Yes. And um, tell us about what Django's wearing here. It's quite a snazzy uniform. So can he go anywhere in public? <laughs> no. So he's wearing a, a jacket because he's working. Yeah. Um, and that's part of our insurance policy so there is some very strict rules in New Zealand about where dogs are allowed to go um, for public access so Django is allowed to go anywhere that he's invited <laughs> or that we have pre-arranged <laughs> before our visit. So is um, Django actually classed as a service dog? So in New Zealand we don't refer to them as service dogs we refer to them as disability assist dogs right. um, they're the organisations that have public rights access um, Django is registered as a working dog um, and uh, with, uh, with our work, he is allowed to do his work, yeah. <laughs> his yeah. working dog work, in the facilities where we have an agreed arrangement. So tell us about his work, right? What sort of tasks can a, a, a pet dog assist a family member with? Sure. So the, the sorts of tasks that he does in his usual everyday stuff is more um, companion animal therapies. Um, but pet dogs can help a number of family members with different things. So uh, we've just started teaching him a couple of assistance tasks that we hope to be able to show you today. Um, something like collecting the keys. Yeah, go on. Let's have, I see, I see <laughs> that they're surreptitially placed over they there. So. Are. Shall we see if he's yes. going to do that? Django, sit. Come. Okay, Django. Keys. 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 <laughs> that never work with children or animals. Okay. Shall we remind him that we're working by giving him another task to yes. do? Yes. Another one that we've just started teaching. Wait. Okay. So I do have to remove my shoe for this one, so excuse me, everyone. And for television purposes, I've used a very pretty coloured sock. Jingle, <laughs> sit. Jingle, sit. Right. So at this point, my dog Tilly would just be eating the sock. <laughs> yeah. Jenga sock. Oh, look at that. Good, good boy. Good, okay, good, good boy. Now, can you get the keys? Uh -huh. Oh. oh yeah. Can I have the keys? No, nah, no. Nah. Oh, <laughs> good boy. Oh, you're awesome. <laughs> Sit. Down. So these are these are tasks that obviously are really difficult for for some people to do themselves. So yeah, it's amazing. What else would he be doing around the home? Wait. So um, he doesn't assist us around our home. We don't have um, a person with a disability in our home. But the sorts of things that he helps with in schools, um, he can rest his chin on a child that's maybe feeling anxious or uncomfortable. Um, he's very good at walking gently on a lead, so children with mobility challenges are able to take him for a walk and feel like they're participating. Yeah, he really likes to uh, run things himself, as you can tell. Jingle, sit. <laughs> Those are my keys. Sit. You didn't want them before. Wait. Okay. Uh, he likes to show off his tricks as well. So, Jenga, shake hands. Oh, thank you. Oh, good boy. Behave. <laughs> and um, what are your future plans for Dog Able? Um, so we've been going just over a year now, and our demand is huge. So we are struggling to keep up already. Um, biggest focus is on getting some new volunteers. So we need volunteers that have the avail availability during school hours, but also have a dog that would be able to be trained up to be a therapy assistance dog. Um, we also need funding, um, a big part of that, so that we can provide that extra training. So our volunteers do require extra training for themselves and their dogs, particularly in the areas of um, understanding autism. Um, we work 
predominantly with children on the autism spectrum. Yeah. And um, and how long would it take to actually train a dog like Django? So Django's actually a rescue dog um, and he was neglected for the first year of his life. Oh. So he was abused and neglected. It took us two years to rehabilitate him. Yeah. Um, and his training is still ongoing, as you can see. Django. Oh, he's so good though. <laughs> He, he knows that he, he, he's decided he wants those keys. He now. wants the keys in the socks. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, definitely ongoing training is key. Um, my other dog, who's ten and a half, is still regularly in training. So we've got to keep up with the training. We can't just expect them to turn up and do a job. No. <laughs> <laughs> or, or maybe doing the planting. <laughs> well, it's been so lovely meeting Django. Thanks so much for bringing him in, Heather. And to find out more about Dog Abled and if your family member can benefit from their help, go to dogabled.org.nz.